So our last section for chapter three is transformations of linear functions. Our basic linear function is f of x equals x. And that is our memorized graph where basically it's uh, got a slope of one. And it intercepts the y-axis at the origin. And we should remember from last year, transformations are things that keep things um, rigid motions. We had three things last year that were rigid motions. They were translations. reflections and rotations. And until we get to the third year of high school math content, we really won't talk about rotations of functions. We will talk about translations and reflections. So first thing I want to talk about is translations. Okay, remember, um, a translation is um, for middle school terminology, a translation would be moving something up, down, left, left, or right. Okay. For linear functions, we're concerned about moving something up and down. Okay. So if I say g of x, that's just another name for a function, is equal to f of x plus k. Um, if k is positive, your graph is going to move up k units. And you can think about that in the terms of my f of x is x, my g of x in this case would be g of x equals x plus k. That's going to move the move your y-intercept up k units. If k is less than zero, you're gonna move down k units. Okay. Um, the other thing we have was we have a reflection and for our purposes during the first semester this year, we're only going to talk about reflections across the, um, the, uh, X axis. Um, a reflection across the x-axis would be something like h of x is equal to negative f of x. That right here, this negative sign right here, I want to write it using my original function. h of x is equal to negative x. That green graph, I'll actually put another graph stamp up here, would look like this, where it's going to go over one, down one. And like that. Just flips the graph upside down. That's what our reflection is. So those are the two basic things that I can have. And the types of things you need to um, be able to answer are things like this. You 
examples. If f of x is equal to x and g of x is f of x translated down, five units, what is g of x? Okay, well, my g of x is gonna be equal to my f of x minus five, so my g of x is equal to x minus 5. And it doesn't matter that I just start out with the basic parent function. I could have said if f of x is equal to 3x minus 2, I'm going to use the exact same what is g of x? And in this case, again, my g of x is the same original thing. It's equal to f of x minus 5. Well, my f of x is 3x minus 2. And I subtract 5 from that, which would be 3x minus 7. So oh, that's the basics um, of what's going on. And you need to be able to go both directions. If I give you examples like this, um, where I give you f of x and I tell you in words what I want it to do, you have to be able to come up with an equation. Or if I give you two equations, let's say I have f of x equals negative 8x minus 6. And I have g of x equals negative 8x plus 4. I want you to be able to describe in words what is happening to go from here to here, from f of x to g of x. Well, what I look at, first thing I want to look at is I would look at the first part. Okay. If the signs are the same. Okay. I'm, actually, I'm going to, okay. If the signs are different, we are going to say, um, if the signs are different, we're going to say that it is a um, horizontal reflection. Okay. Other thing, I'm going to go back to the first page really quick. The number that's in front of the X, that tells you how steep your graph is. So if I have a positive one, my graph is at a 45 degree angle. That number gets bigger, my graph gets steeper. So I guess you can kind of almost call that a rotation, but it's not really a rotation. We're gonna call that a stretch. So if um, the slope of M is uh, we're going to call the slope of g of x, that's that number that's in front, is bigger than the slope of f of x. That is going to be a horizontal rank. Let me show you over here what I mean by that. If my slope is bigger,
call this g of x. And the blue one is my f of x. We call it a horizontal shrink because it looks like I just took the graph and I squished it horizontally and pushed it into that new line. If the slope of my g of x is smaller than the slope of f of x, we're going to call it a horizontal stretch. And in the number part, if the, I'm going to call this the K, so we have something generic here like uh, oh, H of X equals M X plus K. If the, um, if the g of x k value is bigger than the f of x k value, then we call it a vertical shift. And if the g of x um, up, and we're going to have to do um, some subtraction to figure out how much it went up. And if the um, g of x is smaller than the f of x k value. It's a vertical shift down. And the last thing we want to look at here is if the signs are different of the two slopes. Um, I already have that right here. It's the horizontal reflection. I guess the best way to actually show you this is to actually um, work through some of the IXL questions. Um, it'll probably bring everything together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to IXL. We're going to be doing both of the ones that are listed for 3.6, transformation and describing transformations. So transformations. And again, let me zoom in real quick. That should make it a little easier for you to see. And if we need the paper, I'll pull up my screen, grab with the paper. Because find G of X, or G of X is a translation seven units down from f of x equals x. Write your answer in the form of f of x plus b, where m and b are integers. And if m is 1, we don't have to write it. And if b is 0, we don't have to write it. Those are our two invisible numbers, multiplying by 1 or adding 0. Oops. So let's do this. Well, 7 down means I'm going to subtract 7, so my answer would be the original equation, x minus 7. Okay, I want to reflect across the y-axis. Well, if it's just x, I reflect across the y is the same as reflecting across the x-axis, so this would be just a negative x. I want to go seven units up from X, so it would be X plus seven. Reflect across the X axis is going to be a negative X. I want to go eight units right. Um, so let's look at the original graph. Let me, uh, Go here. Let's take a graph.
I take it my original graph here. And I move it eight units to the right. Well, actually, I'm going to just move this one four units to the right. That would give me this graph. So I went four to the right, which is the same thing as going four down. Four to the right is the same thing as going four down. So let me bring that over here. So that would be an X minus four. Oops. Oh, it said eight units right. I gave you a different example. So that's why I got it wrong. Translates five units up would be X plus five. We'll get back to one of those questions in a minute. Six units up is X plus six. Be careful if they're asking for the F or the G. Okay, I'm looking for the G. 10 units left, okay? If I went right, that means the same thing is down, so going to the left would be the same thing as up. So I'm gonna do a plus 10. Three units up, X plus three. So even getting one wrong, it took just about four minutes to get to a score of 70 for the first one. Okay, let's go to the um, second one, describing the transformations. Go back to just IXL. It says, what kind of transformation converts from negative 10x to negative 10x minus 10? The only difference is I'm now subtracting 10, which means I'm going to go 10 units down. What kind of transformation goes from minus 10 to plus 10? Okay, 4x minus 10 into 4x plus 10. Well, let's uh, go over to our graph really quick. Uh, find the right clicker. There we go. So if I have a y-intercept, I'm going to do 4x minus 10. So minus 10, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 over one, up four. And I lost my straight edge. That will, we'll find it in a minute. Then I have four X plus 10. So there's the 10. And then I'm gonna go down for one, two, three, four, and over one this way. Notice that the lines are parallel. Um, if I wanted to go up, that would be going up 20, and that's not there. So I'm not going to do an up or a down, um, and I'm going from the blue one to the green one, so I'm shifting it left. So that's how I would I'd look at something like that. Notice that the slopes are the same on this one. I'm going from minus five to plus nine. So let's look at this. I'm going from a minus five up to a nine. I'm going this direction. That's plus 14. Um, but it's actually gonna, because the slope is different. Um, so again, that's the same thing. It's gonna be either up or down 14. But because the 14 is not listed there, it 
kind of look at this, 2x minus 5, my original would be something that like, goes at minus 5 up 2 over 1. My new one is 2x plus 9. 9 would be here, down 2 over 1. Going that way. So remember, any time that you move the graph up, you could be moving it to the left. Well, up would be up 14. To the left, I'm going to be moving it to the left 7. Okay. What kind of transformation converts these two? Notice that the y-intercepts are the same. I'm going from a slope of 2 to a slope of 4. I'm going from a slope of 2 to a slope of 4. That was the horizontal rank um, of the graph. Okay, that last one, I had the same y-intercept, okay? Now let's look at this next one. If we want to um, get it, we'll graph both of these and kind of figure out what's happening. I want to go from 2x plus 3, the 1, 2, 3, go up 2 over 1. I wish I would have my straight edge here. And then 6x plus 9. So 9 would be up here. I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1. This one we may get wrong. We'll see what it says in here. It wants to know, was it a vertical stretch? Um, it does kind of look like I pulled it up vertically. Um, it's definitely not a vertical shrink. So it can either be a vertical stretch or a horizontal shrink. I'm going to call this one a vertical stretch. If they have the difference, if they have the same y-intercept, it's going to be something that I'm going to call horizontal. If they've had different y-intercepts, I'm going to call it something vertical. If it talks about that. What kind of transformation takes this graph to this one? The only thing that's different is the negative sign here. So that's going to be a reflection. Um, and in this case, it's going to be a reflection across the x-axis because I'm just, if the negative only applies to the first term, if both terms would have been changing signs, it would have been a reflection across the y-axis. Oh, well, I guess that's. Here's the cheat sheet they give you. A times f of x is vertical stretch, horizontal shrink, stretch, reflect x, uh, reflect y. I would just change the x sign to the negative. Ah, so there's the rules that you're going to want to have in there. Make sure you copy those down. And again, it's OK to get them wrong, some of them wrong, but look at the answer. So this one is just like the last one. So that's going to be a reflect across the y-axis. Um, this one, both signs change. So that's a reflect across. So 6x went to negative 6x. Negative 2 went to positive 2. That's a reflect across the x-axis. Um, both signs change. That's a reflect across the x-axis. Only the first sign change, that's a reflect across the y-axis. There we go. Still only seven minutes because we got one of them wrong. So uh, should not take you very long. It should take you about 10 to 15 minutes to do both of the um, practice lessons that are associated with it. Again, this is the end for Chapter 6. We'll have... a uh, Quick review for um, function uh, concepts 
just make sure you review that. Um, you will be taking the uh, test on function concepts in IXL. So we're going to go back here. What you're actually going to be using for the test for this chapter is, go down to three, is this checkpoint. That's the grade you'll get for the test. Um, you will not stop at 70. So as soon as you finish 3.6, go ahead and work on the test.